Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, The Last Science Corner. Today we are going to discuss the uh, recent most paper that you had in your like, December exams. Uh, we'll try to complete the MCQs today in this lecture. We'll do the theory part in the next one. The very first question is, a cyclist ride a um, track three times. Her friend uses a stopwatch to record the time at the start of the ride, after which uh, one circuit and at the end of the three circuits, the reading from the stopwatch are shown. Now we can see that the stopwatch is not starting from zero. So in order to compensate for that, in, in order to get that error out, first of all, and first thing that we need to do is we have to subtract it from 180. So 180 minus 6 will give us 1. 74 seconds and uh, this is a time for one circuit okay uh, what is the average time for one circuit of the track or we can either do 600 minus 6 which will give us 594 and now the error of the stopwatch has been removed. Now we will divide this by three because it has completed three tracks. So 594 divided by three will give us 198. So option number C is the right one. For the second one, we have a cylindrical coil. A, cylindr uh, a cylindrical can is rolled along the ruler shown in the diagram the can roll over twice what is the circumference of the can now there are two ways you can uh, complete this question one state uh, away measure this distance or measure the initial distance and the final distance and divide it by two i'll explain you the both that in the first part uh, the initial value is you could clearly see let me here it's 2, 0, 1, and 2, and add that 15. So 15 minus 2 gives us what will you? 13. So first way is this, or if the initial value is 2 and the final value is 25, 26, 27, and 28, 28 minus 2 equals to 26. And it rolled over twice as mentioned in the question. So 26 divided by 2 is 13. In either case, you'll get the same answer of the circumference of the circle. For question number 3, they have asked us that a drop uh, of water dripping steadily at a tap. The diagram shows a mating center which has collected 120 drops of water. Now, uh, we can apply the ratio formula here. Let's first read the question. How many drops in total have been collected when the mating cylinder reads 10 centimeter cube? Um, I would suggest the easiest way to solve this question is go to for the ratio formula that when the volume is 4 cm cube, the drops collected were 120. Now you're asking us okay, what would put the number of total number of drops when the volume has reached to 10 cm cube. So just simply divide these two quantities 120 over x and x would give us. 4 into 120 over 10. I have made x the subject. So we'll get 300. 0, 0, and 4 into 12 is 300. So you can check it at your, at your end as well. That What is the right answer for that? So 10 over 4 equals to... Oh, I made a mistake here. I put the ratios wrong. Because we don't have the number of drops against 10 centimeter cube. So here would be x and here would be 120. So 10 times 120 divided by 4. So 4 3 is a 12. 10 into 30 is 300. So number of drop would be 300. Moving on to the next part. The graph represents the motion of the traveling along uh, between two stations. Which statement about the train is? Correct. So let's review all the options. Its acceleration takes a longer time than its deceleration. We could see that the acceleration part is this and it's steeper than the deceleration. Let me write it down as A and B. So we could see that this is A part is more steeper than B, then this option is incorrect. 
it travels at a constant speed for less than half of its journey. So clearly we could see that for 100, to the total time is 900 out of which 100 and uh, 500. So in the total 500 out of 100 is acceleration and uh, 400 seconds it's it took to decelerate and for 40 400 seconds it moved with constant speed so this could be the right option so let's just get back to it it travels 2000 meters in the first one second so what is the formula area in the graph one by two base into height what is the value of base here quickly try to get the answer on your own we have 1 by 2 base is uh, 100 and height is 20 so 210 so the total distance covered is 1000 meters so it's strong it travels 10,000 centimeter at constant speed let's see that again we have a triangle a rectangle now this time so we'll use the formula base into height or length into breadth whatever suits you so the time is 400 we already discussed here for the constant speed and the height is again 20. So 20 into 2 is 8, so 8,000. This is again wrong. So the only right option we have left with B. It travels at a constant speed for less than half of its journey. Going on to the next question, a car travels six kilometers along a main road in six minutes, then travels two kilometers along a minor road in six minutes again. Which calculation of the average speed for the whole journey is correct? So what is the formula for average speed? Total distance over total time. We'll just look for that value here. So I see in the very first one here. Here you could see that total distance is 6 plus 2, 8. And total time is 6 plus 2 is 12. So keeping that in mind, so this option is also correct. This option is also correct, but let's focus here. Um, let's focus on the units. It's eight kilometers per minute. Here they have given us eight divided by 12, 0.67 kilometers and 20. Clearly this does not seem the right thing because eight over 12 is not uh, going to be 20 kilometers per minute. So the right option would be option number A. For the next part, we have MCQ number six. They have asked us to calculate. We just did this MCQ. They have asked us to we always remember students whenever a graph is given, we always apply the formula. So here we could see the shaded region is triangle. So one by two base into height, base is 24 and height is 14. So Seven times twenty-four will. Uh, he does not. He has not asked us to find out the value. So one by two, twenty-four into seven. Where is that option? Twenty-four into fourteen into one by two. C. So option number uh, C is right for this MCQ. For next one, we have which graph the uh, represent the motion of an object moving at constant speed. So hurry up. That's a very easy MCQ. What a constant speed is shown. This shows rest. This shows deceleration. This shows acceleration. So we're only left with one option, which is option number D. If you guys remember, this could use could be used for constant speed as far as for uniform speed because we do not have any other option when it comes to distance time graph. Moving on to the next MCQ, we have a car takes 15 minutes to travel along a road 20 kilometer. What is the average speed? Again, the same thing. What is the formula for average speed? It's 20, uh, sorry, total distance over total time so total distance given in 20 look for the units here they are all given in kilometers per hour which means i have to convert 15 minutes into hour which we'll do using this formula 15 over 60. so 15 over 60 could also be written as 60 over 15 so by putting the values in the calculators we'll get option number c what is the next question? A stone has a volume. We have volume given. We have mass given. Here, the density formula is mass over volume. Uh, look for the units again. They are grams per centimeter cube. So we do not need to change anything. 2 divided by 0 0.50 will give us 4 grams per centimeter cube. 
Moving on to the next uh, MCQ, we have, they have asked us to find the density again. Density is again mass per unit volume. We could clearly say that the mass is given here and the cube has, what, what, is, what is the formula of volume for a cube? Because a cube has equal sides. So it would be two times two times two. So keeping that in view, we'll have volume as two times two times two as uh, eight centimeter cube. And the mass is given as 7.2 grams. So mass of a volume, keeping that in view, the formula will get 0 0.90. Now we have a liquid has a volume of 1000 centimeter cube and the mass of 85 kilograms and density of water is one gram. So how does the density of liquid compares? First simply we'll just put in the formula 85 divided by 100. So it would be 0 0.85. So the density of liquid is 0 0.85 whereas the density of water is one gram per centimeter cube. So clearly the density of water is greater than liquid. So just let's just explore where that give option is given. Uh, its density is lower than the water, so it, it just right in front of us. So that's not difficult MCQ. Moving on, and then which object has the greatest density? So again, we'll just put the formula in, and we also know that density is inversely proportional to volume. So we'll keep that in mind. We'll just look for the greatest volume which is given in the question. So we, so that we don't have to go for the um, Calculation, but I don't think so. I think so. We have to go for the calculation. It has asked us for the greatest density. So the greatest density would go for the minimum volume. So just try these two options. So by dividing them, uh, 5.4 divided by 2 is giving me 2.7. And uh, 13 divided by 3 is giving me 4.3. So again, the right option would be B. Why I narrowed, narrowed it down? Because smallest volume gives the greatest density. So keeping that in mind, I narrowed it down to option number A and B. For next one, on which ball there is a zero resultant force? The resultant force is only zero when the forward and backward force acting on the object is zero. Or whenever there is a motion, the there is equal and opposite forces acting on the object. So let's uh, C, direction of movement is here, so the resultant force is acting in this direction, uh, object is at rest, this could be considered, but there is no motion in the object, so we couldn't say, sorry, uh, he has a non-zero resultant force, so uh, constant speed has zero resultant force, zero resultant force, zero resultant force, and uh, we're left with only option number C non-zero resultant force. So in which situation is no, again, we have in which situation there, in which situation is no resultant force needed. So let's explore the options. Uh, a car changing direction at a steady speed, uh, it would obviously require a resultant force. A car moving in a straight line, okay, this is a potential option. A car slowing down, skip resultant force with the air and car speeding up, it also has resultant force. It also has resultant force. So we are left, we are, uh, the right option would be 14, which property of the body can be changed by applying force. So we have studied that force can change. What properties? It could change motion, right direction, shape, and speed. So, these options will be cancelled out immediately because force do not change the mass of the object. So straight away we are left with only one option that does not has mass into it. This is one. And now we have force, resultant force acting towards right. So we have to see where is the resultant force, where the sum, we could see here 7. 7 is here, 5 is here, opposite, equal and opposite, so resultant force 2 newtons to the right. Oh, okay, we we accidentally did uh, choose the right option. Here we could see there is no resultant force, here again no resultant force, here the resultant force is acting to the left, so they have asked us to the right. 
let's jump to the next mcq we have a concrete port is carried up by a very high mountain at top of the mountain the gravitational field is slightly weaker than at the bottom g is weaker what effect we know that uh, have mass on weight w is equals to mg so weight depends on mass and gravity whereas mass remains constant everywhere so we have to narrow our options down to c and d and as the gravitation force is acting uh, is decreasing so would the weight of the object so uh, we will go for option number c w is equals to on the basis of mg again the next question is almost the same compared with being on the earth's surface how do her mass and weight changes here the this force is less than the earth which means g values again less so without wasting our time we just did the previous mcq that uh it would be less uh mass would be unchanged and weight would be less now here i have asked us to find out the average speed here this is a trick question i really like this question when i was looking uh going through this mcq he has given us a car travels 100 kilometers and journey takes two hours the highest speed of the car is this and this if we focus in and, and recall the formula for average speed, it's actually basically total distance over total time. We do not have to look for anything else. So we will just simply do 100 divided by 2, which is 50 kilometers per hour. So option number B. Uh, which example, the next question is, which example is, uh, weight is an example of which quantity? So we know that it's the force cause F is equals to W is equals to MG. We have done this formula in the kinematics. So that's that was an easy question. Uh, which graph shows that it uh, obeys the Hooke's law. So we know that K extension and load is proportional to each other. So option number A without wasting our time an easy question this is a good question here that which is a missing table we know that the extension is given as original minus sorry change in length minus original length so we have to give this value if it is saying that the result is shown and the extension are given uh, we also know that, that f is equals to kx. From there, we can also find the extension of the value, which is f over k is equals to x. So, um, use any value or simply we could see that uh, we can find the value of uh, extension from here. Uh, f is given as 2 and extension is given as 2.1. So, 2 divided by... No, 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 no. We just have to find the value of the missing factor. Let's just do it in a simpler way. We know that. We'll let, let's just give a, get back to the previous formula. Extension is given as uh, change in length minus original length. So if we rearrange this formula, we'll have extension plus original length equals to change in length original length is given as 15.2 and extension is 2.1 so 2.1 plus 15.2 will give us uh sorry 15.2 will give us uh 15 16 to 17.3 so we have this option here moving on to the next one we have uh, again, uh, how to find out the extension. So we just did that uh, extension is given as measured length minus original length without any issue. Now we have to find out the extension when the load is 20 Newton is applied to it. First of all, let's look for the original length. Uh, original length is 4, approximately 5. It's, it's, it's in the middle. So let's just say the five centimeter is the original length when the load is zero. He has asked us to find out the value at 20. So 20 at 20, the length is eight centimeter. So uh, how to find the extension? Change in length minus original length. So eight minus five will give us 
थ्री ऑप्शन नंबर ए मूविंग ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट वन वी हैव टू फोर्थ इज पी क्यू आर विच बीम रोटेट्स क्लॉक वाइज सो वी हैव टू सी इन विच वन दे इज अ ग्रेटर फोर्स एक्टिंग टू द राइट ऑफ द ऑब्जेक्ट so let's just say uh, 4 into 2 is 8 uh, what is the formula for uh, uh, moments f cross d so here the moment is 8 newton meter here 4 here we have 8 newton meter here we have 10 newton meter here we have uh, 2 into 1.5 will give us uh, 3 newton meters and here 4 newton meter so the answer is right in front of you where in which uh, option there uh, on in which diagram q and r the greater forces are on the right so this would the force would act in this direction so we'll go for option number uh, we'll search for option number q and r and that is given in c which is 25 moving on to the next one we have uh what is the weight of the plank acting at its midpoint good question let's see what are the force value of forces given we have given this and uh, uh, does not mention what is the pivot point a plank xy lies on the ground a load of 120 newton is placed on a distance from the end x and y is lifted up <clears throat> the upward force is sixty-five newton in diagram. Weight of the plank is acting at its midpoints. So let's say x is the uh pivot point. So distance of one twenty into zero point five zero plus w into uh, the total distance would be two because always we have to take this with respect to um. uh the pivot point uh 2 meters and uh, the other force is acting in the opposite direction so we'll put it try as 65 times 2 plus 1.5 plus 0.5 that would be 4 so uh 120 times 0.50 is equals to 60 plus w into 2 Equals to sixty five times four give will give us two sixty. So we have to make W the subject. So I will move it to the other side. Two sixty minus sixty is two hundred. Two hundred divided by two is hundred newtons. Do we have this option? Yes, right in front of you. C. For the next one, energy is in a nuclear reaction. Nuclear power station. We always have fission, so we'll narrow it down to this one and takes place in the sun. What is the right option? Yes, fission takes place in nuclear reactors and fusion takes place in that. What's up, Jovi? Ah, lorry has a mass of four hundred kilogram and is traveling to speed. We have we have two things. We have mass and we have speed. A car has a mass of hundred kilograms. The kinetic energy of the car is equal to kinetic energy of the mass. So first, find out the kinetic energy of the lorry, which would be one by two into four thousand into four square. So we'll be have two thousand times sixteen because four four. So zero point five times four thousand. Times four square will give us thirty-two thousand. So the kinetic energy is thirty-two thousand. We have to find out the speed of the car. So the kinetic energy of the car would be equal to one by two mv square. Is it has already mentioned that the kinetic energy of the lorry and kinetic energy of the car is equal. So we'll replace this value here. So it would be thirty-two thousand um times two. Divided by mass, which is thousand, is equals to v square. So we'll take the whole under root. So we have thirty two thousand times two divided by thousand will give us eight. Do we have that option? Yes, right here. Now we have. Uh, which expression is against the resistive forces? So we know that as long as the law of conservation is followed. 
kinetic energy is equals to potential energy. But if there is uh, resistive forces present, then we have to take that into account as well. So we'll narrow our options up to this will be cancelled, this will be cancelled, this would resistive force would never be equal to the sum of the energies, but the difference of two energies. So option number B would be the right option. And uh, again, this formula is valid only uh, if there is no resist resistive force. If resistive force is present, then the formula. Let's write write it down also. Work done against friction would be given as Ft. That would be equals to mgh minus 1 by 2 mv square. So you could also memorize this formula if the resistive forces are present. Moving on to the 30th MCQ, we have which energy resource does not derive its energy from sun and that is geothermal energy resource energy is depend on sun what is the impulse provided by this acceleration we know that the impulse is given as f cross f cross t yes so uh, it's given as f cross t as impulse we know that f is equals to uh, ma what do we have in the formula? An object of mass 550 kilogram has a velocity of this and this in the same ratio. What is the impulse? We also know that F cross T is equals to MV minus MU. So we have M, we have uh, U, we have V. So let's just put the value in the 50 into 20, sorry, 10 minus uh, 2. So 50 into 8, 50 into 8 will give us 400 Newton seconds. I hope you remember this formula. This is F cross T is equal to change in momentum. I have that, I have applied that formula in the theory. Now we have to find out the efficiency. We know that efficiency is given as useful output over input. So input uh, is 60. Waste is 48 and this is useful output. So 12 divided by 60, where that option is given. 12 divided by 60 is only given in option number A. Uh, let's go to the next MCQ. We have which contains two scalar quantities and two vector quantities. We have speed and distance. These are scalar, but time is again scalar. So this is not the right option. Force is vector, velocity is vector, distance is scalar, and mass is scalar. So this could be the right option. Mass, energy, and temperature all are scalar. So this is cancelled. Weight and acceleration vector, vector. So again cancelled. So the only two sets of scalar quantities, distance and mass, and two sets of uh, vector quantities given in this MCQ. Then <clears throat> we have a speed time graph, which road describes the motion of the car at point x and y we know that that shows a uniform x, uh, speed and this shows the constant speed so let's just find out where that is given uh, moving with constant speed moving with the uh, changing speed 34 yes because the speed is uniformly changing with with equal interval of time. So this is the right option because it's not at rest, not at rest, not at rest. So these options will be excluded anyway. So four objects are moving in a straight line. The table shows the distance moved by each object uh, in each second of its motion, which object is moving with, cons uh, with constant non-zero acceleration. So we just have to see where the value is continuously changing. So five, six, seven, eight, here, the distance is not changing. This would be cancelled out. Uh, distance moved 5, 8, 14, and 26. That's not a constant value. Uh, 5, 7, 10, and 14. 5 to 7 is 2. 7 to 10 is 3. 10 to 14 is 4. It's increasing gradually. Okay, this could be the right option. Uh, Non-zero acceleration. Here we have 1, 1, 1, 
the difference is one. So the right option here non zero. Here we have a constant acceleration because it's when we'll divide it with time. So option number B. Drag force in a car increases with speed at 20 meters per second. The total drag force is 400. The mass of the is this. Driving force is 700 Newton meters. Uh, the car increases with drag force is basically the resistive force. So 400 minus 700 would give us 300 as the resultant force which would act in the direction of motion. So let's see what statement about the acceleration of the car at 20 meters per second is uh, correct. So the acceleration is 0 0.25. We, uh, we can find the acceleration by using the formula F is equals to MA. So F equals to MA resultant force is 300 and mass is 1200. So dividing this and 1 by 4 is 0 0.25 so which means that we can narrow down to this a and b uh, the acceleration is 0 0.25 but decreases as the time passes the acceleration of 0 0.25 meters but increases uh, as the time for driving force is constant and the total drag force is 400 so uh, it might it could decrease with time because the car is moving with a constant force of 700 newton but the drag force increases with speed so if the speed is increasing and the resultant for uh, and the force given by the engine is constant so there is more chances that the acceleration would decrease as the time would pass through it uh, also keep in mind if you have any issue regarding any mcq and you need further explanation to that you can just go ahead and uh, ask me in the comment section i'll get back to you as soon as possible we have a rectangular pool with the dimensions depth this density this what is the mass of the pool so what is the formula that we could use is uh, density is equals to mass per unit volume we have given density, we have given volume 15 to 25 into 2. So 15 to 25 into 2 is equals to it would give us some factor of uh, uh, 5 something factor. It would be uh, 25,000 because density is of what is this and this, this and this will give us the volume now which diagram shows the magnitude direction of vertical forces acting on the object uh, an object is rising vertically at a constant speed for for an object to be moving with a constant speed the upward and downward forces must be equal to each other so we'll look for that uh, upward force is 3 downward force is 3 upward force is 5 downward is 3 so this will not be the right option 2 and 4 not right option three and three this could be the right option and uh, so narrowing it down to a and d uh, an object is rise, rising vertically so keep weight is always constant and drag force must be acting in the opposite direction of the object object motion so the right option would be d because if the motion is upward now, so the drag force must act in the opposite direction. So we'll go, although A and B both have the zero resultant force, but this, this was the trick part where we have to see the drag force would be acting. Drag force is a resistive force, it would act in the opposite direction. So moving on to the next one, second last MCQ, we have, uh, what is the weight of each boy? Uh, two boy of equal weight. This is the equal weight. Uh, their father has a weight of thousand newton side. See the balance is being used that it moves. Uh, during one part of the cycle, the father descends to a distance of forty centimeter. At the same time, the boy nearest to pivot through twenty centimeter. The boy rises through eighty centimeter. 
So if the weight of the two boys are same and the this distance is given as O and the weight is given, so F cross D is equals to F cross D plus F cross D. Uh, the weight of both the boys are same, so we'll take that common so thousand into the distance of the father, which is forty centimeter, and uh, equals to F will be taken in common. And D1 is 20 plus 80, which is 100. So 1000 times 40 divided by 100 will get 400. So F would be 400. And because we have to further, uh, both have equal values. So 400 plus 400 will give us 800, 800 Newton. Moving on to the next one, we have the last one. Yeah. What is the extension of the spring with the weight of three newtons attached to it? Okay, we can go for, uh, should we try the ratio formula or go for three newton weight? And uh, the length is 5.99. Okay, it's not a difficult one. We know that uh, in order to find extension, a change in length minus the original length. So it's 5.33 minus 20. So that would be 13. I hope you understand the MCQs. Let me know if there's any issue regarding any uh, anything. I'll soon be sharing the theory part of this paper. So just stay tuned. Bye-bye.